Hey everyone, welcome to another YouTube tutorial. My name is Brian Robinson, uh, and today I want to take you through creating what might be like a, a very small thing for you, but can be very, very big for people who, who do a lot of code pen work. Uh, so this video is going to cover creating a watermark for your pens and code pen. So a little bug that goes in like the bottom right corner, bottom left corner that shows maybe your logo can link out to your website so that when you create a pen and maybe it goes viral on Twitter, you can have it all linked back to where you want it to go. Um, I see this done a, a few different ways. Uh, one of the main ways I see it is people writing HTML and CSS inside of the pen of their tutorial or their cool little, you know, widget that they've created and shared. And that's not great because the focus of your code pen should be on the code itself for that specific piece. And so what we're doing today is we're going to create a pen that's going to have our watermark in it, and we're going to include that on any other code pen that you want. And that's going to require no additional HTML, no additional CSS, and no additional JavaScript in the pens that you're adding this to. So that's the goal. We're going to dive right into the code and see what we come out with. So I've got codepen.io up here, uh, I'm already logged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and create a new pen. And we're gonna do all of our work inside this one pen. And we're going to use this by including it as a uh, quote unquote external style sheet and external JavaScript uh, file in whatever other code pens we want. So it's going to create an external watermark that you can include wherever you need it to be. Since we're doing that and we can't do that with HTML, I'm just gonna go ahead and close out our HTML window and we need to write all of this in JavaScript and in CSS. Uh, so to do that, we want to actually create a, uh, a DOM element inside of our JavaScript. Now, me personally, uh, I'm not a big fan of having to write like, you know, new element and, and create kind of you know, the div and then the content and the text for it. Uh, I like writing mine as a template literal. It's not the best solution for every, uh, every problem out there, but I truly enjoy being able to write it that way. Uh, so I wanna go ahead and create a variable that's gonna store my string. Uh, we're gonna let it uh, just be called maybe watermark here. Uh, and then it's gonna be a template literal. So we use the back ticks. And then I'm gonna write my HTML kind of like normal. And it's gonna be uh, an anchor tag with an href that's just gonna go back to my site, brianlrobinson.com. Uh, from there, we also want it to have a class so we can hook into that with our CSS. It's going to be class of, I don't know, uh, let's call this watermark. That makes the most sense, right? Uh, and then we wanna put some sort of text or image inside of this. I'm gonna use an image. Uh, and this is going to be just uh, my logo. That's the easiest solution here. So we'll put an image source, close our anchor after that. Uh, and then I'm just gonna come, I'm gonna grab uh, the current CDN hosted version of my SVG logo. Paste that in here. And you can see nothing has really happened as of yet. We'll save that in. Uh, we need to actually still append this to the page, but before we do that, uh, we need to create a function that's going to parse this as a DOM element. And the nice thing is in ES 2015, I think, 20, 2015 plus, uh, we have some new uh, built-in functions to handle this. So I'm gonna create a new function uh, that's gonna create an element from a string. So our uh, property here is gonna be a DOM string. And from there, we're gonna use a little arrow function. And we need to set a variable uh, for our HTML. So const HTML. And here we're going to use a new DOM parser function. And from there, we can actually just parse from string is a, is a method on that. And we're gonna take our string, so our DOM string, and we're gonna tell it this is text slash HTML. Uh, and from there, it's going to actually render our DOM element for us. And we're just going to go ahead and return out of here uh, the HTML body first child. All right. And then from here, what we want to do is come in and we're going to create this on our body. So I'm going to add in document.body. And we're just going to append at the end of this uh, that function, so L. And we want to pass in the string of watermark. So it's a function pass in watermark here, finish that out, save it. Uh, and as you can see here, we have our uh, logo appended. Now, there's no styling on it, there's no positioning on it, we need to do all that in our CSS. So we're gonna come up to our CSS and we're just gonna write our class of watermark here. Uh, we wanna go ahead and have this be position fixed 
to fix it on the document so it's always scrollable, always visible in scroll. Uh, we're going to set this to the bottom, so it's maybe in the bottom right, so bottom, maybe space it out one rem, uh, and then on the right-hand side. Keep it out of the way of most of your content. So there it is at the bottom right-hand corner down here. Uh, we also want to maybe set a, an opacity on it. So we'll set an opacity of 0.5, kind of fade it in, and that allows us to do a very simple hover state, watermark, uh, colon, hover, without that space there. Uh, and from there, we can just reset our opacity to one. So this way on hover, it becomes nice, big, and bold. Uh, and maybe we set a little nice transition on it, right? So transition, uh, 0.3 seconds, give it a little easing function to ease out. And now when we hover, there's a nice little fade in. So this works, and what we can do with this is we can take it to any other code pen we want. So let me open up a new code pen window. Uh, we'll go to my dashboard, uh, grab one of my uh, popular ones here, this cover page style. Uh, and as you can see, it's kind of you know, this interesting, there's a scroll area down here, some, uh, some fun things happening here. Lots of people have enjoyed this over the years. And I'm going to include our URL uh, from the other code pen as what's called an external script slash pen. So I'll save that in. And we're going to also add our CSS in here in the same way, add external style sheets and pens. Save that. And you can see now in our window, we have uh, a, a little uh, watermark on this area. Now you can adjust the size of this in that CSS file. Uh, let's say maybe we want this to be uh, a bigger image inside of it. And this is a, an SVG, so it can be whatever size we want it to be. Watermark, image, uh, set maybe a width of, we'll make it huge so we can see the difference. Width of 500 pixels, bam, huge in that window. We've saved that in, so we can come over to the cover page, refresh the page, and blammo, there it is really, really big on that page. Obviously, probably not what you want to do there, uh, but the, the key there is that whatever you want it to be, uh, you can style it up in the CSS. Now, I have a version of this where I'm actually making it configurable so that you can take this and fork it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an object for uh, various key parts and not just have it be hard-coded in our watermark HTML. So I'm gonna create a new uh, object up here, watermark details, uh, that equals an object. And I'm gonna set up a, a URL and the image, and we're gonna actually include that in our template literal down below. So our URL uh, will have this be the same URL, https.brianlrobinson.com. And we'll have uh, an image as well. And this will be that image URL that we have down here. We want nothing to change. That's the key of a good refactor, right? change the way your code is and have nothing change. Uh, so now what we can do is instead of having these hard-coded bits down here, we can use uh, the literal notation, uh, dollar sign uh, braces, and actually pull in watermark details dot URL for the URL and do the same thing uh, with our image source. So we'll bring this down here for the image source and this will become uh, image you can see now uh, that URL has stayed the same. It is brianlrobinson.com, and the uh, the image is back in working order. So if you wanted to change this on the fly later on, let's say you, you had your logo change, you wanted to put like your smiling face on there, something random like that, uh, you just need to change out that one image. Uh, and we can take this a step farther, and we can maybe set some opacity defaults and some, uh, some transitioning defaults. Uh, and instead of using... Um, hard values in our CSS over here, what we can do is we can use CSS custom properties, C CSS variables, if you will. Uh, so instead of using 0.5 here, I'm gonna use the variable notation for this. I'm gonna call uh, var, takes parentheses, it's a function in CSS, and I'm gonna call out our, uh, what do I wanna call this? Maybe uh, opacity or watermark opacity. And I can actually set a default in CSS custom properties as well, just in case this isn't set in the JavaScript. So we'll say the default is 0.3. And I'll set the same thing for our kind of hard-coded value uh, of our transition. So our transition will be watermark transition. Uh, and we'll also set a default value on that of the 0.3 seconds. Or maybe we'll set it to, uh, to zero so that it's, uh, it pops in unless uh, you set an easing uh, bit 
as well. So now this pops in, our opacity is at 0.3 instead of 0.5. Let's go ahead and set those in our default details uh, object here up top. So we're gonna set our default opacity uh, to 0.5 and we'll also set a transition timing object as well. And we'll have this be just a string of 0.3 seconds. Again, I kind of default to template literals. You can have just that be a random string there as well. Uh, so then we need to actually go in and set these custom properties in the DOM as well. Uh, and we have some nice JavaScript objects to handle that for us as well, some JavaScript methods. Uh, so as it turns out on our document, uh, we have what's called the document uh, element, which is the root element, document element. Let's see if I can spell that properly. We can take our style object on that, kind of the, uh, the CSS object model, and we can set a new property here. So set property is our method and it takes two, uh, two properties to, as arguments. Uh, the first is what we're going to name it. So in this case, we want to be the exact name we have over here in our CSS, so dash dash watermark opacity, and the value we want to set. So in this case is the watermark details uh, dot default, is that why I said default opacity, default opacity. So now it's going to look to that and set it instead of the, uh, the default we have over here. It should grab it from uh, our default opacity up here just to confirm, we'll set that to one. It does in fact go up all the way to one uh, and we'll reset that to about 0.5. And the same can be done for our uh, transition timing. So we'll grab this again, we'll do the same thing, document, do, document element, style, set property. Uh, in this case, we're gonna grab the watermark transition, put that there. We're gonna grab the transition timing from our object and change out watermark details dot transition timing. So now instead of popping in, it should ease in or, or ease out technically over the course of 0.3 seconds. And we had that nice fade. Everything that we've just done here as we save it in uh, is also going to have happened over on our uh, code pen that we included this on. So now, as you can see, we have a lovely fade happening here. So this allows you to control your watermark for any of your maybe popular code pens, or if you're doing a lot of exercises, you can very easily uh, kind of add this in so a user can always get back to your website. Obviously, you can play around with bigger and better things. You can put some text in here that could expand out a little animation. You could bring your social in, all sorts of stuff you could do in here but the basics all kind of tie together. You create a code pen, you build your HTML and JavaScript so you don't have to bring your HTML with you, uh, and then you have your CSS as well. And then in the default functionality for uh, this other code pen, you're gonna go into your settings for your CSS, link it up as an external style sheet, go into your settings for your JavaScript, link it up as an external uh, script, and then it's automatically gonna populate down here. No muss no fuss, a watermark on every single uh, code pen that you could possibly want. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching this video. And if you don't mind, take a second, go down below, click that like, click that subscribe, uh, and let me know that this is the type of uh, video that you would like to see more of on YouTube and I'll keep on trucking. So until we meet again, keep doing amazing things on the web.